you're a PC gamer running an NVIDIA GPU and you want that extra little bit of performance in your games, then you've come to the right place. Because today, we're taking a look at the best settings for NVIDIA Control Panel in 2020. Hey guys, it's Forrest or Dave here. Welcome back to another video, finally. I know I've been away for a little bit, but I'm finally back making more videos for you guys. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at NVIDIA Control Panel and all of the best settings you can put into it to improve your performance in games. So let's jump straight into this and show you guys how you can access NVIDIA Control Panel if you haven't done it already. Uh, if you go down to the bottom right hand corner of your screen, uh, you can click the arrow. And you have a lot of different uh, apps down here. You should see the NVIDIA logo. If you right click that and then go to NVIDIA Control Panel, wait for a second, it takes a little bit to load up. Uh, but we'll be greeted with this program that opens up. You can also search for it simply on the side here uh, through the standard start menu as well. So inside of NVIDIA Control Panel, you'll see a bunch of different tabs, I guess you can call them, down the side of the screen. If we go to the first one, adjust image settings with preview, Make sure this is set to use the advanced 3D image settings, which is the second bit we're going to go to. Uh, if we were to use the use my preference emphasizing bit, then it would try and apply some sort of preset, which we don't want. So make sure we've got it set to use advanced 3D image settings. Next, we're in the 3D settings area and with global settings selected at the top here, we don't want program settings because that would set things purely for one program rather than globally across all our games. We're going to start with image sharpening. Now, this is a setting which you can have on if you like. If you don't like it, then you can turn it off. It's not necessary in games, but the NVIDIA sharpening is a really nice little feature. Uh, if you guys saw my Warzone settings video where I talked about the NVIDIA filters, I mentioned that you could apply a sharpen filter um, using the NVIDIA filters. Now, the NVIDIA filters do tank your FPS a little bit, they do bring it down. Uh, whereas this image sharpening setting in NVIDIA Control Panel does not affect your FPS at all, I believe. Uh, and it just sharpens up the image really nicely in a lot of games like Warzone, uh, like Sea of Thieves, all those games where you wanna have that crisp clear image for some of those long range combat scenarios. This is really good for that. So make sure you've got this turned on. And I like to have my sharpen set to 0.4 and my ignore film grain set to 0.17. That works out really nicely for me. Ambient occlusion, we want off in NVIDIA control panel. Um, it's not something which you want to control with from in, within here. It's something which you want to turn on in game if you like it. Uh, anisotropic filtering, we're going to have the set to application controlled, fairly similar to ambient occlusion, except you'll see ambient occlusion doesn't have an application controlled setting. Uh, basically, these are two things we want to control within the game. We don't want to change them within the control panel. Next, anti aliasing FXAA. Uh, we just want this to off. We want gamma correction for anti-aliasing set to off. And we want anti-aliasing mode set to application control. This will give you the best performance on anti-aliasing. And once again, we'll give your game complete control of how you handle your anti-aliasing, whether you like FXAA, uh, uh, SMAA, or whichever anti-aliasing form you like to use. You can control it from within the game rather than in here. And the same for anti-aliasing transparency, which we also want to off. CUDA GPUs, this setting shouldn't make any difference, but make sure you've got your GPU selected. If you've got multiple GPUs, then I believe you can select them all here. Um, but for most of you guys who have one GPU, just make sure you've got that one selected in here. DSR factors, uh, this is dynamic super resolution, which uh, as you can read here, it says it produces smoother, oh, I, can't, I have to hover, hover here, uh, produces smoother images by rendering a game at a high resolution, then downscaling it to the native resolution of the display using advanced filtering. So basically it allows you to upscale your image and make it look sharper. Um, but it's not something which you want to use for competitive nature of games. If you're playing single player games, then it can be nice to chuck on. You can turn to like two times native resolution. So I could go from uh, my 2K monitors, like a 4K look in game. But for any kind of competitive gaming, it's definitely not something you want to have on. So keep that off. Low latency mode is a really important one here. It will be set to off by standard. I would recommend that you turn this on. What you'll see at the bottom is that uh, it will prioritize latency. 
by limiting queued frames to one. So the way that games usually work is they queue up the next frame for you. Uh, and the more frames that you queue up, typically the better performance your game has, but the more, uh, the more latency you have, the more input lag you have in game, which we don't want for when we're trying to, you know, shoot people in Warzone because input latency is bad. Uh, you, there is a setting here called Ultra, which technically should be better than On. It should be basically like an extra good version of it. But I've had problems in many games when I've had Ultra on. Uh, I think I've had problems using OBS recording. I've had problems uh, loading in certain games and, and such. I've had no problems with on and the latency feels great. So I would recommend sticking to on, but try Ultra if you want to. Today's video is sponsored by ProSight, a PC application that gives players access to Counter-Strike style custom crosshairs in any PC game they want. The application comes with an easy to use interface, allowing players to customize their crosshair to any size, color, and style, save it as a preset, and then take it into games like Warzone, Fortnite, and Sea of Thieves. For more info on the app, head to centerpointgaming.com, link in the description. Next, we've got max frame rate. Now, this is really nice that NVIDIA have added a frame rate limiter into NVIDIA control panel for us to control. Um, I set this to 141, which is just below my 144 from the, the refresh rate of my monitor, mainly because A, I sometimes use G-Sync when I'm getting the screen tearing in single player games. I don't use G-Sync in competitive games because uh, I just don't. It might not actually affect anything, but I just don't like using it. But in single player games, I love using G-Sync to make the game look really crisp and have no screen tearing. Uh, and setting a max frame rate is necessary for G-Sync to work, if you guys didn't know. Um, but also, when I'm just generally gaming, I don't feel the need to go to unlimited frames per second unless I'm playing maybe games like Valorant, which really benefit from super high frame rates like yeah, Valorant, um, CSGO and games like that. Most other games, I actually get better stable performance by limiting my frame rate to 141, which I can consistently hit. And that works out really well for me. So max frame rate, I set, but you can set it to off if you want that unlimited FPS in game. Monitor technology, uh, this kind of goes with the previous one. So at the moment it's fixed refresh, but I can enable G-Sync for when I'm playing my single player games. So this is where you set that on and off. Multi-frame sampled AA. Just turn this off, not something we want. OpenGL rendering GPU, make sure you've got your current GPU set. For me, it's my only option, so I've just, I, I don't do auto select. I, mean, I ensure that I select it because I don't want the software accidentally selecting, I don't know, like an integrated GPU or something weird. I'm not even sure if it can do that, but if there's a possibility, I want to avoid it. Power management mode, really important one here. You want to have max, prefer maximum performance. We're running CPUs and we, computers. We don't want to be uh, putting optimal power on anything. We're not running a laptop, or most of us aren't. Or if you're running a laptop, you've got it plugged in. So maximum performance all the way. Preferred refresh rate, for me, at highest available. You don't want to do application controlled. You want highest available. Uh, and if you've got a max frame rate set here, it will mean that you're ideally hitting that frame rate the whole time. Shader cache. This is a debated one as to how it helps. Uh, in basically what it does is it will reduce your CPU usage in games by saving shaders that have been compiled in games uh, to, a, to a cache area on your drive. Uh, and in most games, shader caches help a lot. I know in Warzone, they help a hell of a lot because you don't have, it takes less time to load in. You get less buffering when you're running between different areas. It's a really nice thing to have on, so I would recommend you have it on. The next few I'll just rush through quite quickly. Uh, texture filtering, anisotropic sample optimization, put that on. Negative LOD BIOS, allow. Quality, high performance. Obviously, whenever we see high performance, that's what we want. Trilinear optimization on. Threaded optimization, really important uh, piece here. Uh, allows applications to take advantage of multiple CPUs. So that, what that actually means is multiple cores of CPUs. So for someone with a quad core above, this is 100% necessary to have on. Triple buffering, keep that off. Vertical sync. If you really hate vertical sync and never use it, then you can set this to off. I keep this at use 3D application setting in case there's ever a reason why I might want to use it. Because when you set this to off, the V-Sync setting in games will just not work. So use one of these two depending on whether you ever use V-Sync in your general workflow. And then the last two, virtual pre-rendered frames. We want this set to one. And virtual reality, variable rate sam super sampling. If you have a VR headset, maybe this is something you want to tamper with. I do have a VR headset, but I haven't touched this, so I would leave it like that. And that's all the settings you want in the 3D settings area, which is basically what most of this video is about. So 
If we look in the program settings, you'll see that you can actually set specific things for specific games. For most games, I keep these the exact same. I use the global settings. Um, in Apex, I've been using some different stuff, so that's why it looks different here. But for most of my games, I keep it exactly the same. Let's apply all those settings. And we can move into configure surround physics. Make sure you've got uh, your physics set as your GPU, like so. Let's apply that. Resolution, this is where you can make sure you're at the correct resolution, the correct refresh rate. We don't want to be sat at a lower refresh rate than, than, we, than we've got a monitor for, obviously. Uh, desktop color settings, uh, I actually like to turn the digital vibrance up a little bit. It sometimes resets for me, but 65 pops those colors a little bit more on my screen, and I really do like it. So I like to turn the digital vibrance up a little bit. Rotate display, not useful. View HDCP, not useful. Digital audio, not useful. Adjust desktop size and position. This is where you can set whether you want to use stretched or uh, uh, stretched or black bars. Um, I have it set to no scaling, so I have black bars at the moment when I have lower resolutions. Set up G-Sync. So this is where I'd enable my G-Sync uh, when I want to use it. Setting up my multiple displays, uh, which is similar to the, N the Windows uh, settings for displays video color settings and, and, and video image settings. Uh, I use the video player settings for video color and for video image, I use the video player setting as well. I don't let NVIDIA control panel control that stuff. So there we go, guys. That is all of the settings today. That was a fairly in-depth video on exactly how I would run NVIDIA control panel right now in 2020. Um, if you have some of these settings wrong, you can be losing out on a lot of performance, which is rather stupid because it's so easy to go in here set it and never have to touch it again so make sure if you're updating your graph graphics drivers and you're doing like clean installs of drivers that you come back and you set these things uh so that you get that performance in game so thank you very much for watching guys hope you've all enjoyed and i will see you guys in my next video Bye bye